Welcome back to this Let's Play of Mask of the Betrayer. I found out in my last video that the uh, armor I planned on using isn't going to work. So I'm just going to leave it here in this box. This box also has what's called an Astral Rodent Charm, which is sort of an interesting item. Um, it is active in your inventory. It gives up one AC dodge modifier. You can see my AC goes up to 48 with it. So it just gives plus one AC. Uh, it would normally give a, bo a, a penalty of 2 to intelligence, but since I am immune to stat draining, you see it here? I have 17 int. Still 17 int. Um, it uh, doesn't affect me. Unfortunately, I don't need the strength anymore. I've got a better strength item equipped. So, if you do have a mage, though, it's not a bad item to... Uh, give to them or to anybody really I mean it's free AC with that just sits in your inventory this club here is it's a plus eight club what's not to like it also uh, has a po disease effect and a fear effect which frankly fear on weapons is a detriment as far as I'm concerned it's really annoying there's also this mysterious device here which you can activate and what you do with it is you activate and target a spirit essence, you, and it gives you the feat Maliate Spirit. Maliate Spirit is used um, just like Mold Spirit, in that it uh, it crafts items, but uh, it can be used on pristine spirit essences. Except in Mold can only can only work with uh, the um, the brilliant essences. Pristine Spirit Essences, if you can get three of them, they'll give you plus nine to a stat. I'm not going to bother. I'll probably get, when I get two, I'll get plus eight to con on these boots, and that's pretty much all I'm going to do for as far as enchanting. This next room here is the Golem Room. I'm not going to bother with that just yet. I need, there are a couple more Golem parts I need before I get involved with that. In the back corner here, that well, I'll just show it, it's, it's pointless. It's just another guy teaching class and doesn't have anything interesting to say. In this room, we have a few more unruly students to uh, blind with our greatness. And uh, I'm just going to kill them off screen. It's just another set of vanilla wizards. They're all blind now, so they're utterly helpless. No tea test for you, student. Anyway, uh, back in the, up in this corner here are another group of these students. So again, I'm just going to kill them off screen. I love this comment, though. The headmistress is dead. The ban on killing visitors is lifted. Well, I guess things have gone downhill. I mean, if you're allowed to kill visitors? Well, this visitor doesn't like being any attempt being made on it, so uh, goodbye, guys. Looks like we'll be right back. This room also has one of the golem parts. Um, I may not use that particular golem part, actually. Uh, I have another set of arms that I picked up in this game. Just down the hallway is a student hard at work, and you can talk to him any more or less... Uh, says he's working on this problem of chaos or something and you can ask him about it and more or less he tells you uh, you have to separate the methods you know essentially ice methods in one room fire methods in the other and he's been working on this and sort of just ignoring the fact that you know everybody's dying around him which you know I guess he's just a little oblivious anyway um, there are a couple ways to solve this puzzle well there are two um, the hard way is to sit there by the door with this control box and wait until essentially the right methods get in the position and then when you hit the control box it'll switch places. If you hit these obelisks first though and then hit the uh, control box it doesn't switch their places it just kills them and so we can just you know kill off all the methods and then you just pick them up and deposit them on the right sides of the room. I'll do that off screen. It's really boring to watch. When you drop the last Mephit corpse, in this case the Ice Mephit, you get 2,000 XP. There's a little reaction thing that goes on. And you can claim from this soul housing 
a fragmented soul. All right. I don't know exactly what we're going to do with that just yet, but, uh, well, actually, I do know, but it, the game hasn't explained it to us. But, hey, we've got it, and we got our level. Um, I don't think this is a very important level. I'm still waiting one more level for uh, before taking Spirit Shaman again. So it's just going to be a casting level. There's also this library here. I'm not going to mess around with the library. And in this room, there's Ma Mistress Zerzura. And this door here was also locked, but we can use uh, the key we got from Minaris to get to it. And this falchion is, well, it's okay. It's uh, in her hand. It's plus seven and gives 3d6 electrical damage, which sounds ridiculously good, except that you can make things that are just twice, you know, literally twice or three times as good for elemental damage. And it's really just kind of disgusting. But that's the way it is. Before we continue, let's figure out what we're doing here. And uh, to do that, we need to go to the headmistress's tower. You probably can't hear it very well, but I kind of like the music in here. This is, or rather was, my mother's private sanctum. I hate the notion of Aramon staying here. I'd rather burn my mother's books than have Aramon read a single page of them. Anyway, I'm going to gain my level off screen and be right back. There are a couple things we can interact with in this room. This fireplace has a singed scrap of paper, which, um, more or less just says seal the door. There's not a whole lot left in it. The other thing you can interact with is this lab journal. And it doesn't really, it's just a lot of text. And in it you can find a hidden key, which is use, is necessary actually. Um, and there's also some information about a puzzle coming up, which I am not going to uh, bother with explaining just yet. The puzzle we need to know, though, is this door here. There's an inscription. Four wayward souls, four incomplete, unique and flaw with fates forgone. And it gives you some descriptions of what four fragmented souls you, or sorry, four incomplete souls that you uh, will use. The fragmented soul we got from the method puzzle is one of them. But obviously we need some more. Now, the classrooms are where, is where we came from. We can also exit here to uh, the uh, <laughs> Or we can try and exit here to the, uh, the the doors in this area don't work very well. Um, to downstairs, I'm just going to go downstairs the other way because this door is being annoying. Here downstairs, um, we can use the key we got from Nephris's the headmistress's tower to come to this area, which is, says Uncanny Reflections. It gives you a journal update. This is one of the failed souls we'll need. And there's this orb here, um, which you can use to activate it. We can't do anything with this puzzle just yet. If you see all these mirrors here, this is a light puzzle. Um, there's a place at the far side which will a, um, create a beam of light, and so we have to get the beam of light from point A to point B. If you've ever played um, was it Dungeon Siege 2, they kind of like those puzzles, those kinds of puzzles in that game. Um, we can adjust a couple of the mirrors as we come across them, but we're going to have to look at the actual path to figure out exactly which way to point some of them. This is a side area with just some elite guards, exactly the same as they are were outside, um, and I'm just going to kill them off screen. This room also has this armoire in here with these... Uh, cat slippers. I think these are actually an item that originally showed up in the, one of the Icewind Dale games. Um, kitten slippers, sorry. They give a dexterity bonus and they're they're okay. Um, they're not real important though. 
I'm going to have to leave the rest of the underground or the, the instructor's quarters to the next video though because I think we're running out of time.